<laughs> we had a little confusion in the ranks. This the question was whether the choir was going to sing now or after the talk. So, guess what? It's after. <laughs> So the topic is blessings. And blessings are a wonderful concept because you have the opportunity to, to be yourself a blessing. In, uh, in the New Testament, um, a book that was almost appropriated by Paul, some have referred to him as the man who stole the Bible. Anyway, his letter to Thessalonians says, pray without ceasing. And that seems like a tall order. Are we supposed to be prostrated on our knees all the time, praying without ceasing? Well, no, you're not supposed to do that. And the reason is very, very simple. The reason that you don't need to do that is that every thought is a prayer. Every thought has an energy. Every thought that you think, every thought that you allow to hang out in your mind is itself a prayer. It has a specific energetic value. It has a vibrational rate. It can be measured. And it is something that can impact the world. It can impact your body. It can impact the room that you occupy. It can impact everything because that is what energy is. And thoughts are energy, energy in motion. And when you think, you are praying. So, whether you believe it or not, you are constantly praying. You are already praying without ceasing. So, the question then is, what kind of prayers are you sending forth into the universe? Are you choosing to be a blessing? Do you choose to have the thoughts that you think be a blessing to someone? Of course, in miracles suggests that all minds are joined, that there are no private thoughts. That every thought you think goes out into the universe and has an impact. And one of the most dramatic demonstrations of the truth of that statement is the work of Dr. Masaru Emoto, a Japanese scientist who discovered a way to freeze water and then photograph the crystalline structure of the frozen water. And he exposed the water to several varieties of music, some Bach, and some acid rock. And the crystalline structures that were photographed after being exposed to Bach were perfect. They were symmetrical. They were gorgeous. And the water crystals that were exposed to acid rock were really quite disfigured and not very pretty. They were just like a mass of black and gray colors. 
It was amazing to look at the photographs of these structures. And that's the impact that music can have. But even more amazing is the fact that he put water in a bottle, and on the bottle it said, I love you. And he put water in a bottle that said, I hate you, I hope you die. And the same thing happened. Just having the words on the bottle that the water was put into had an impact on the physical structure of the water. The water was taken out of these particular bottles, frozen and photographed. And once again, the structures, the crystalline structures of water that was exposed to loving thoughts on the bottle. Not loving thoughts put into the bottle, but just the words, I love you, on the bottle, were wonderful. They looked just like snowflakes, crystal snowflakes. They were orderly, they were symmetrical, and they were lovely. And the water exposed to the words, I hate you, I hope you die, were once again disfigured ugly and not at all coherent or symmetrical. So what in the world is that about? How, in, how, how can a logical left brain person like me hang on to something as seemingly illogical as that? And the, the, the answer to that is simply that Thoughts are things. Thoughts have energetic value and they have an impact. I once did an experiment with my daughter who was highly critical of my uh, thoughts. And that shouldn't surprise anybody. I mean, what daughter isn't objecting to Dad? Don't do that. You've heard that before. Anyway, unbeknownst to her, I put a picture of Mahatma Gandhi in an envelope, and I put a picture of Adolf Hitler in another envelope. And they were not labeled in any way, so she had no idea what was in either envelope. And I had her place one of the envelopes on her solar plexus and hold it there. And then she extended her arm and I pushed on her arm and it was solid as a rock. I could have done push-ups or pull-ups from it. And then I had her put that envelope aside, pick up the other envelope, put it against her solar plexus and I pushed on her arm and it was it was weak. She couldn't even begin to hold it up. And then I opened the envelopes and showed her that Adolf Hitler was what had made her weak and Mahatma Gandhi is what had made her strong. And she was absolutely apoplectic. She said, Dad, that can't possibly be true. How, how, you've tricked me somehow. But that is not a trick. It looks like a part of a trick, but it is the fact that Photographs have energetic value. You can look at a photograph and get some energy feedback loop going. And that's what impacts this world. It impacts every conceivable aspect of human life. So, if you have thoughts like, you sure don't know how to drive, why don't you get out of the road? Or, God, you're a terrible person. 
I just guess what you're doing. Do you know what percentage of your body is water? It's something in the 80 or 90 percent range. So guess what's happening to the water that's in your body as a result of the thoughts that you are carrying in your mind. You are creating a crystalline structure in the water that's in your body that you might find less than desirable. So not only is it an opportunity to actually be a blessing, but you don't really want to be the other kind of non-blessing because it has an impact on your physical presence, not just your mental presence, not just the karma that you're building, not just the Akashic records that you're making. All of those things go on as well. But you have a very real opportunity to take better care of yourself, to not turn your body into a boiling cauldron of unpleasantness. And that's what that kind of thinking has as an effect. So, what does this really imply? Do you have an opportunity to bless everyone for everything? Yes, you do. And the question is, of course, will you? And I don't know about you, but it's true for me, by Tuesday afternoon, when I'm struggling through the stuff that the week presents, I forget. And I fall into old patterns. And I start mumble, grumble, grumble. And that's what's important to hang on to, is to remember that you are, in fact, already praying without ceasing. You are doing it right now. So what kind of prayers are you sending out into the universe? What is your choice? Do you wish to be a blessing? Watch what you think. Watch what you think because it actually has an impact. Is there anyone here who hasn't walked into a room where an argument has been going on? And have you not been able to sense the tension in the room? You know the expression? The tension was so thick you could have cut it with a knife. And that is the phenomena of the energetic value of words and thoughts and actions. They have a physical impact. If you walk into a room where an argument has been going on, everybody shuts up, but the tension is still there and you can feel it. And that is what we're talking about. You have an opportunity, each one of you, to bless everyone you see. And it doesn't have to be some elaborate thing. You could just smile at people and mean it. In the Islamic world, there's a saying that says, you're not a true believer if you don't wish for everyone else what you wish for yourself. And that's the same concept, is be a blessing. Bless everyone. Curse no one. Even people 
that you think are deserving of it. Because they're not. No one deserves that. And you see, what's going on in the world is we have a whole lot of folks who are unaware of who they are. And are you going to help them discover who they really are by cursing at them, by saying mean things to them, by saying mean things about them, or even thinking unpleasant thoughts about them? Gosh, that means we can't criticize the politicians anymore. <laughs> oh, how will we live without the opportunity to badmouth those idiots? We have an opportunity to raise the consciousness level of the room, of the city, of the state, the nation, and the whole world. Woo! We have that opportunity. And it's only going to happen one consciousness at a time. We can't afford to risk the consequences of muddying the waters. What an interesting observation. What an interesting turn of phrase that is. Muddy the waters. And that's exactly what unpleasant thoughts, negative thinking, pictures of Adolf Hitler, and other assorted rogues in the gallery are doing to the world. Because there is an energetic value to every thought, to every word, and certainly to every action. So, we have this marvelous, marvelous opportunity to awaken in ourselves the awareness of love's presence. It is present. When I talked earlier about prayer, it is not possible that the divine would change its mind because it's, it's <coughs> fixed in unconditional love for all beings. Unconditional means unconditional. But if you listen to what Many of the world's religions say they talk about a love that must be very conditional because there are rules. And if you don't follow the rules, guess what? You go somewhere you don't want to go. But I guarantee you that that is not the case. You will go where you choose to go. And you will go wearing the cape that you have built for yourself with all of the thoughts that you've thought, all of the words that you've spoken, and all of the actions that you've taken. So, what are you going to take with you? Are you going to take a happy thought with you? Are you going to take a pleasant thought? Are you going to take some muddy water? So it's really couldn't be any simpler. It simply couldn't be any simpler. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand this principle. But what gets in the way, of course, is our resistance to change are hanging on to old ways, are hanging on to the notion that we are righteously indignant. You know, there's no such thing as righteous indignation. It's an oxymoron of the first order. There is no indignation that is ever righteous. 
there is no negative thought that is ever a positive influence on a bottle of water. It doesn't happen that way. What happens is that you're sending out a negative message to the world, to the water in your body, and to every room in your house. So, my invitation to each of you is to pray without ceasing consciously. You already are praying without ceasing, but I invite you to do it consciously, to make a conscious choice every time you notice a thought that's in your mind. And if you notice a thought that you aren't so pleased is there, just broom it out. Say, okay, I don't need that thought anymore. Goodbye. And that's all you have to do. Don't beat yourself up because you had a bad thought. Just broom it out. Just like the dust bunnies under your bed. You don't curse them out. You just broom them out. Get rid of them. So it's a wonderful opportunity that we have. And it doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done or what you've thought. From this moment on, you can be a blessing. So that's my invitation. Be a blessing. And now it's open mic time. Great.